yet. Motion capture. Transformation. The dance led the art, the art led the dance. In a very artistic way. With Presence, it was the first piece of, that we did out of the four, and actually was the starting point that led to all the others being a representation of art. We strongly focused on not the dancer, but the byproduct of the dancer. The original idea was to not even have a dancer in there and just watch the dust flow from, from what their movement would have created, uh, which was quite an abstract idea to want to represent dance without actually seeing a dancer. The process was quite complicated and had multiple steps. The initial one was to get a, a dancer into the studio and work with our motion capture software and hardware to be able to work with the dancer to do a lot of movement that involves sliding. If you were sliding along a floor and dust was flowing and the wind wrapped around your legs, what movements would actually lead to the most beautiful visual dust images? So it was kind of not the dance led the art, the art led the dance and vice versa. It was a, it was a bit of a, a strange process. We had reached a stage where we wanted to make her a silhouette so that one, we wouldn't see any detail of her, we wouldn't see the actual artists themselves, but still it, it, we found it more beautiful. We found it that, it that they had to be there to sort of see what was wrapping around the leg, why it was disappearing, where, where the particles got their momentum from. So we had taken a very lateral idea of getting rid of all dancers and to represent dance, but felt that it, it just came around to being more beautiful. Transformation was, it was a literal interpretation of basically a dancer's um, progression to the stage. So from training, becoming this professional dancer and actually dancing in, in Hamer Hall, this dancer is trans transforming, even though her body doesn't necessarily, it just it is uh, butterflies emanating from. It was that transforming from a person and then creating something beautiful from that. We had a very clear idea of what the character should be, uh, what her, the fact she was in drapery rather than a, than a dress and the, the butterflies, that was all quite clear to us. What wasn't clear was her set in her environment. We had her in a, uh, an Edwardian room. Uh, it was a very stark white environment. We were gonna be contrasting the, the butterfly colors with the white walls using man-made light and it was it was really like the idea was working to us to a point but then it just it sort of broke down a little bit in, in the edit so we completely scrapped that and started again uh, and put her in because it was a natural idea the the butterflies and put her outside of it kind of makes sense um, and really just played with light momentum was probably the one with the most most narrative in that this one was about strength, masculinity, energy, and really, really trying to represent how energy can surpass your body. So with momentum, we, we wanted to make sure that even though this guy was smashing, it didn't represent that he was dying, but his energy was so strong and so powerful, it expanded beyond his body. It's a, a visualization of how powerful these dancers are. With Momentum, we, we were able to use the, uh, once again, the motion capture suite to get the handheld look, to make sure that it, it had that realism, that, that human aspect behind it. With the process of a, of a man smashing, there's obvious understanding that it's not real. That, that's fine, we're, we, we sort of, we're okay with that. But we like playing with the, the person's perspective with throwing a handheld camera, throwing the realism of of depth of field, all the components that, that make your brain feel that it's a real object, and then giving them something impossible. With breath, the internal brief was to create vision with sound. So it was picturing sound. It had this image of salt planes, as minimal as you could get, and the music was gonna be creating something, whether that be uh, maybe a tree or, or a, a, you know, some furniture that, that kind of grows. It, it always had to be very organic and it had to be very flowing but actually finding what that was was a bit of a, a bit of a challenge really making the object stand out once again on the white and blue background was important to us so the concept of this red um, plastic came up and it just kind of flew from there it was it, it, 
as soon as we tested it, it stood out, it was stark, it was lovely, and it just really worked. Well, sound was obviously a concern at the start because we, we always work with sound. We always, we edit sound, we use sound cues to, you know, sort of tell the story, whether it be music or voiceovers or whatever it is. And so we, we did actually start editing these things to sound. But then when you turn the sound off and watch the edit back, it didn't really make any sense. It, it just, we thought it would help it flow, but it, it didn't. So then we, had to, we went back to the drawing board and started editing just as, as the visuals told you to edit. And it was a completely different way of doing it. And it really, I learned quite a lot from it in terms of you don't need the element of sound you just need to shift the way you do it. And it was, it was basically your eyes and your body telling you that it needed to change rather than the music cues. Uh, and once again, it was, I found that a really great process and just something I hadn't expected at all.